For the record, I'm not really telling you that you should not try these foods. What I'm really saying is, if you didn't grow up in Britain, the seven foods I'm about to tell you about, they might sound kind of weird, or they might just not be what you expect when you hear the name. So I like to just tell people what things are and consider it a warning. If you wanna go ahead and try these foods, awesome, go for it. But if you hate them, don't say I didn't warn you. Feel free to share your opinions. Whether you're in vehement disagreement with me or you find my comments amusing or interesting, I hope that you comment, share your thoughts, and hit the like button. Good old Marmite. I gotta mention this one first just to get it out of the way. It's funny, in Britain there's a saying that things are like Marmite if it's something that you either love or hate because it's just kind of polarizing, Marmite is. And unfortunately, I'm kind of on team hate. When Americans ask me, what is Marmite? I always say fermented yeast scum. And yeah, that makes them not want to try it. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you find that to be an unfair description of what the product is. I'm sorry if, like my friend Randy always said, I'm yucking your yum. That's kind of naughty of me. But it's kind of like, you know, I love cheese and I watched this vegan documentary and they called cheese coagulated cow pus. I mean, that's a super rude way to describe something as delicious as cheese, but you know, it's in the eye of the beholder and it didn't stop me eating cheese. So if you wanna try Marmite, go ahead. It's a super salty concoction that's just kind of not really like anything else. And it is a yeast extract that's made from the foam that's created during the yeast fermentation process. But if you're British, you've probably grown up eating nice hot toast with a layer of butter and a thin layer of Marmite on top, and you've developed a taste for it, and you think it's great. That's awesome. But as for me, I'd rather just have my toast with butter and jam on top. I love fish and chips. And when you get traditional fish and chips, usually they're served with mushy peas. And I'm just not a fan. They are a different kind of peas in that they're made from a specific variety of dried peas that are boiled until they're really soft and mushy. I would just rather have fresh peas, I gotta say. The Scottish delicacy known as haggis. I know the wandering ravens have built a reputation on loving this stuff, but I am just not a fan of it. I kind of reject it on principle. Yes, I've tried it and it's fine, but it's just not super delicious. So why would I choose to eat something that's made out of a sheep's stomach, heart, liver, and lungs? I mean, most of the time I eat meatless meals, so when I'm gonna eat some meat, I'm not eating all that stuff. I'm gonna have, you know, bacon or filet mignon or pork tenderloin <laughs> or something a little more mainstream. Black pudding is something that I mentioned in my English breakfast video because it is a common part of a full breakfast in various places in the British Isles. But once again, just hearing what it is and how it's made makes me not want to eat it. Yes, I have tried it and it's okay, but black pudding don't be charmed by that yummy sounding word pudding. It's actually blood sausage made out of pork blood. I mean, just no thank you. Okay, Jaffa Cakes. I'm gonna get some hate mail on this one, I'm sure, because Brits are very passionate about their Jaffa Cakes. They are really a cultural institution and as I heard one Englishman say, if you go to visit your grandmother and she doesn't offer you Jaffa cakes, 
is she really a grandmother? That is a charming tradition, but I just don't really like eating Jaffa cakes. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Jaffa cakes are this packaged cookie-like thing that's actually a little sponge cake with a layer of orange jam on top and then a chocolate coating. And that's the problem for me right there is I'm just not a fan of chocolate plus citrus. So when people are going crazy over Terry's chocolate oranges, I'm just not on that bandwagon because I don't like chocolate and orange together. But if you're a huge fan of it, go ahead and give Jaffa Cakes a try. They're just not on my favorite list. To continue the dessert category, I'm going to kind of cheat and cover two things in number six on the list. And that is gingerbread and fudge. So here's why I'm grouping these things together. I'm very familiar with fudge. I love fudge. And at Christmas time, some nice chocolatey fudge made with good quality chocolate and butter and marshmallow cream. It's like a creamy, chocolatey, delicious, one of my favorite parts of Christmas time. But beware, if you go to England, don't be charmed by a package that says clotted cream fudge from Cornwall or Devon clotted cream fudge and think that's going to be delicious because clotted cream is delicious and I love Devon, I love Cornwall because the fudge usually isn't even chocolate flavored and it's crumbly and dry and it's just nothing like American fudge. So try it if you must, but don't say I didn't warn you. Same thing with gingerbread. When we first went to the Lake District and I discovered that it was the home of genuine gingerbread, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to try it because I was envisioning the gingerbread I'm used to having in the States a nice, moist, deep, molassesy cake with a dollop of whipped cream on top. But unfortunately, the gingerbread in Windermere is thin and dry and really, really spicy, like gingery spicy. I just wasn't a fan. It's not awful, but like the fudge, it just was disappointing when compared to my very high expectations based on the name. For number seven on the list, I'm gonna cheat again and I'm gonna do a two for one and give you Dara's vote and Ian's vote for what should be seventh on the list. My vote would be for steak and kidney pie. It's a common food in England, but it's just not my thing. I am a huge fan of pie. And as I talk about in my confusing British food words video, pies are kind of a different thing in the US versus UK. The pies that I love are dessert pies, you know, fruit pies and chocolate pies. But in the UK, pies are often a main course and have meat in them, including kidneys, which I just can't get past that whole animal organ meat thing. Even if you wrap it in a nice flaky crust, it's just not something I want to eat. Ian's vote for number seven on the list would be what he calls the nasty pasty. Now, I do not agree with Ian on this one because personally, I cannot wait to go to Cornwall and try a genuine, legit Cornish pasty. A mixture of beef and a variety of vegetables all cooked up in this delicious flaky pastry pocket. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I've had them many times in other places, but I wanna go to Cornwall and get the real thing in the place of its origin. Ian, on the other hand, is the anti-crust. He just thinks crusts in general are not yummy. So he doesn't want to eat something that's all covered in crust with a big crust rim on it. That's just not his thing. The fact that the pasty sports a lot of crust is just a huge negative for my dear hubby. That concludes my list. 
please don't hate on me if I just trash talked your favorite treats, but feel free to share your opinions with me. And I hope you give me a like button either way. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.